symbolism. Heights. Trash apple. Also, this is an orgy of evidence that we're in a poverty-stricken era of New York City's history. It's old-timey New York, so obviously stickball. Even higher heights. Jeez, I think I would rather have three or four minutes of just opening credits than have this bullshit generic old-timey New York City bullshit. Foxy boxing. First glimpse of real main character buried in with stupid old-timey New York montage cliche. Wanton destruction of delicious booze. Peter Jackson had to do this zoom cut because Naomi Watts couldn't actually land the hat trick. Discount Brooks Hatlin. As long as we're laughing, we won't cry over the box office. No, what you'll be crying over is the line, the witch in the wardrobe thumping your ass at the box office. What's this? It's a play. Either this actor guy doesn't know this obvious play is a play, or Anne thinks the guy doesn't know that this obvious play is a play. Movie wastes the first 10 minutes on a character who's arguably not even the main character of this movie. This hairpiece. I'm real good at crapping the crappers. Face a size four. Yes, she is, but she is doing a picture with RKO. Ha ha, original King Kong reference. You want to read a script? Jack Driscoll's turning on a draft as we speak. The screenwriter just happens to be the same guy who ripped the play that Anne was reading at the beginning of the movie. Jack Driscoll. You know? Also, if this penniless vaudeville performer wasn't already a dedicated fan of the nobody author writing Jack Black's screenplay, then we'd pretty much be f***ed forever kicking this King Kong movie into gear. Well, I got a rehearsal for which I'm now three hours late. Why is Driscoll even hanging out on the boat then? All he had to do was drop off the script. And he could have had Carl's assistant Preston get that. If he had no intention of ever leaving on this trip, why did he show up on the boat? If the choice is to jump in the water and swim a few feet or stay on a boat for weeks that you didn't want to be on, f***ing jump, right? These cops took forever to get here after we first heard they would be showing up. If only there was some way the cops could catch that boat. Oh wait, New York had established a harbor patrol unit well before the setting of this movie and should easily have been able to catch it. What am I thinking? Modern kid-friendly CGI Peter Jackson pays homage to earlier, more daring Peter Jackson movies. What are you, Mr. Driscoll? A lion or a chimpanzee? Jeez, you just met this guy. How do you go from zero to dick-measuring asshole in two seconds? Easy to read label is easy to read. I'm calling bullshit on Jack having a typewriter. He didn't bring one. This is a boat used for illegal activity and probably doesn't employ anyone who can type. And I doubt Carl would have been thoughtful enough to carry one on board. It's just he likes it down here. That's where I found him four years ago. Did Driscoll ask for a history on Jimmy? I'm actually quite familiar with your work. Rehearsing how you're going to talk to someone you really love in a mirror cliche. Andy Serkis is playing a human being in this scene. Mr. Driscoll, if you don't mind me saying, but you don't look at all like your photograph. Wait, she's seen a picture of Jack and she made the enormous leap that this was him? In a three and a half hour movie, we definitely don't need this bullshit. S. K. Be sure to spell it out so Jimmy can hear it. We interrupt this King Kong movie to bring you Titanic. I'll make it worth your while. Why does anyone trust Carl Denham? He hasn't paid any money to anyone this whole movie. And now a captain who fears for his safety going to Skull Island is just gonna do it because of the promise of money? When he turned southwest last night. Why would this boat turn southwest? Didn't they launch from New York? That means an easterly direction for most of the trip, unless they decided to travel south from New York and then west through the Americas, but then you would never really have to turn southwest after that. And that trip would be super long. We found him the next morning he'd stuck a knife through his heart. This castaway who survived a shipwreck, a giant ape, and drifting at sea for days was a huge bundle of exposition before he decided to kill himself. There's a warrant out for your arrest. You're just now getting this message. You've been traveling for however long it takes for a boat to go 9,000 miles. No one ever noticed this obvious skull on the map before. This ship plinkos its way through the rocks without sinking. A boat that spends weeks searching for mysterious secret island gives up and heads for Rangoon. And of course, that's how they find the secret island. It's screenwriting 101, really. How did Carl convince everyone to get on this rowboat after the ship had wrecked? And not only that, get qualified personnel to help lower the boat and put it out to sea without anyone seeing before it was too late. Every single person on this boat, including Jack and Anne, said, Yeah, let's shoot a movie. Our only hope to get home is stuck in some rocks. F*** it. Movie rips off the rock formations look like the thing the movie is about thing from Cars. The natives are dicks to poindexters. Also, the natives randomly kill this one guy, but for the rest of this sequence, grab each person one by one and take them to some head-chopping place so that the captain can save the day later. It takes a full hour before we even hear King Kong in the King Kong movie. Hayes is definitely on the ship when Kong roars, but then somehow he and the rest of the crew show up with guns literally two minutes later. And that's with all the in-between footage being slowed down. There's no f***ing way they got from the ship to here in two minutes, considering how long it took Carl and the actors to get here in the first place. And I'll donate the proceeds to his wife and kids. <laughs> Seriously? You believe that shit? How can everyone around Carl be this f***ing stupid? Pole vaulting. Jack sees the skull necklace and says, Yep, a native probably pole vaulted onto the ship. Then he asks this random guy doing important work where Anne is, instead of just going to her room, the most natural place for her to be right now. Did this native guy have a GPS of where Anne was? How did he get on this ship and run past everyone undetected, kidnap Anne, and go back through the ship with an unwilling participant not once run past Jack, who found the guy's necklace and is looking for her, tie the rope back around himself and Anne, and swim back while keeping his hostage alive while being pulled by these helpful people back onto the island? It takes one hour and ten minutes for King Kong to show up in a movie called King Kong. Also, shit. 
In the original, King Kong had already kicked a bunch of dinosaur ass by the time this movie even shows him. And we've got two more hours to go for some reason. Run out! Find him! Unnecessary orders. Getting thrown by a trike tusk merely inconveniences Jack. Lumpy managed to bring a frying pan during the mad rush off the ship to save Anne. So many f***ing dinosaurs. King Kong is a secondary character in his own movie. Also, Dr. Grant, my dear Dr. Sadler, welcome to Jurassic Park. Are you sure about this, Denham? After everyone pronouncing the name Denham the entire movie, and this actor having worked with Denham on previous pictures, it's suddenly Denham. Polite debris. Character falls down while running away from danger cliché. If the brontosauruses are not about to stomp on Carl here, then don't show them about to stomp on Carl, then have the entire exchange between he and Jack, and then pretend like the brontos are still the same distance away that they were before. What the f*** is this asshole doing? Sleeping under all these heavy rocks in case someone takes cover here? The ship and film crew all survived the annual running of the dinosaurs. Also, running of the dinosaurs. All Jack had to do was slightly nudge this ferocious beast to send it flying. <laughs> there goes that scurvy dog, Jimmy Wilhelm, dying another height-related death. This is like Blues Brothers, with Brontos. And everyone survives the dinosaur pileup? I mean, this is the same movie where a dude died from a single spear to the chest. So it's not like this is a cartoon universe where injury and death are impossible. And yet, it is. And donate the proceeds to his wife and kids. Only now does Preston realize what an asshole Carl is. Andy Serkis isn't getting nominated for an Oscar in this scene. King Kong is a dick to his dinner. Giant Piranha is only satisfied if it eats its prey whole. So the giant piranha thing can't swim between these huge gaps here? I'm not a coward. It's not about being brave, Jimmy. Why does this movie spend so much time on these two? Jack and Anne aren't even as developed as these two. Get Jimmy out of here! Yeah, save Jimmy above everyone else. He's the blondest. Oh, give me a fucking break already. These assholes all fall off this log only after the drop is reduced to a few feet. CGI giant bugs. Anne is saved by a spare T-Rex that was walking around. We interrupt this King Kong movie to bring you the kind of King Kong movie you actually wanted to see, but only for a few minutes. Geography savior. Also, sudden steep mudslide through rocky island terrain doesn't cause Anne any injury whatsoever. Surprise T-Rex would rather be scary than eat Anne right now. You know, for all Anne's been through in this movie, she still looks fucking dynamite. What's better than two T-Rexes? Three T-Rexes! You know, this scene is perfectly fine. There's nothing in general sinful about it. It's just shit. I am giant monster out in this movie. We've just now hit the two hour mark. Can there really be another hour and 20 minutes to go? Jimmy shoots blindly and hits the insects, but doesn't hit Jack. More CGI giant bugs. Jesus! If it wasn't for the quality actors and the director's pedigree, this would basically be one of those Brendan Fraser journey to the center of the earth movies, right? Peter Jackson's giant arachnid fetish. Wimpy actor guy suddenly has the balls to swing on a vine with a machine gun to murder giant scorpions. Man, Anne must have gotten to take a shower and go to the hairstylist twice since we last saw her. For someone who slid down a muddy hill and fell into water, her appearance is incredibly resilient. Stockholm Syndrome. She's not dead. Jack's gonna bring her back. Carl is both insane and right. Miraculous escape made possible by convenient stupid bats. Is it impossible to go back where you came from? Sure, there were bats there, but all the bats are fighting King Kong right now. <laughs> <laughs> What? You just got out of a river! How are there this many sailors still left over after all the ones who got eaten, stomped, drowned, or thrown off cliffs? Longest chloroforming scene ever. The whole world will pay to see this. They'll have to come to the island then, because there's no way this giant ape is lifted onto the boat. Or that there's any room for him. But this is a detail the movie will skirt, obviously. The eighth wonder of the world! Just like the Lost World Jurassic Park, this movie still has a whole other movie to show you after they get back to the mainland. Wait, Jack was writing this comedy play for Anne while they were on the boat, and then the whole King Kong Island thing happened, and now they're back, and either Denim has been sitting on this King Kong reveal for a long time, or else the lowly playwright managed to get an entire production funded, cast, rehearsed, and opened in, like, days. Playwright is a dick to his own play. No doubt about it, this theater is huge. One question, though. Is there a giant entrance for King Kong to fit through to get into this theater? I'll offer advice to anyone planning on making a three and a half hour giant ape movie. Don't put scenes like this in at the two hour and 40 minute mark. It will put everyone right to sleep. Wow, Kong sure knows how to kill characters that aren't the main characters. Hey, it's times like this I wonder what's going on with Jimmy, the thieving deckhand who was reading Heart of Darkness. Too bad Hayes died. Stockholm Syndrome. Also, the entire city evacuated in order for King Kong and Anne to have their reunion. There's not even one accidental f***er driving through this right now. Oh, romantic ice skating in Central Park? We interrupt this King Kong movie to bring you serendipity, I guess. It was built for humans, by humans. Not for stinking lice-infested apes. Jeez, did the soldiers need propaganda to get in the mood to fight a giant ape? Also, humans, man. Humans are bad. We cut its ugly head off, and we ram it up at the end! Well, I'm glad the movie took the time to set up that joke. Discount authorities. Anne is nearly invisible at this distance, especially with the sky in the background, but the pilot decides he sees a woman in white anyway. Ah! No, we talked it over and decided, the girl. We're shooting. Wait, sunrise? I mean, what the f time was Carl's big King Kong reveal stage show then? 
Did it have a start time of like 4 a.m.? And then a small gust of wind picked up and blew them to their deaths. It wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the beast. Or the runtime of this movie. Did you ever consider Kong died of old age? Lamb's brains and walnut sauce. Even before we knew we were related, we'd always known there was part of them in us and part of us in them. In the arms of the angel, fly away from here. If the Bible has taught us nothing else, and it hasn't, it's that girls should stick to girl sports, such as hot oil wrestling. Boxy boxing and such and such. Hey, I heard we're going to Ape Island. Yeah, to capture a giant ape. I wish we were going to Candy Apple Island. Candy Apple Island? What do they got there? Apes, but they're not so big. Iceberg, far ahead! She's taking a pounding! Shaft that bin as far as we can tell! Um, phrasing? Re It's no one's fault. Don't f with me, all right? Don't f with me, Sean. Not you. It's not your fault. <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna do this. And if you get eaten, it's your own fault.